Thank you, Nicole. And we'd like to thank Brocade also for hosting us in this beautiful facility. This looks like it's almost brand new. <laughs> so, um, well, welcome. And uh, the, the, the topic that's on your uh, program says this is career navigation and healthy lifestyles. But we, um, so we have sort of renamed it uh, don't, don't Survive, Thrive, How to Be Your Best When Getting By Just Seems Impossible, right? That's a real mouthful. But we know, like you, that you know how challenging it can be to be a professional woman in Silicon Valley with everything you have to juggle. So um, Barbara and Shelley and I, and uh, Nicole is nice enough to introduce us, so uh, you, you can see a little bit more about um, each of us and our, our photographs. Uh, we have, we all uh, have um, uh, a very specific commitment to the connection between fitness and career success. Um, and, and Barbara and I have actually done part of this program before. So we've done this material in some other venues and it's always really struck a chord with women like you. So we thought we would share it with you again today. Uh, we have some ideas and strategies about how you can sort of balance and how you can um, not just survive but thrive. But we want this to be interactive. There's lots of experience and insights in the room so we want to hear from all of you as well. So before we start, uh, you should have uh, the sheet. On, if, is there anybody who doesn't have one? Oh, Nicole doesn't have one. Okay. Is anyone else has one? Anybody else you you have one? What is the next? Okay. So before we start, um, I'd like to just get a little bit of a sense. So you didn't know that this was called, I guess, called um, don't just don't, uh, don't survive, thrive. You didn't know we're going to sort of take this, this sort of tactic. But we'd like you to kind of share with us why you're here. So what was it about the overall topic, about career navigation and healthy lifestyles, right, the connection? What was it about that that brought you here? And then I'd also like to hear a little bit more about what you think of when you think of thriving. So what does it mean to you to thrive? So does anybody want to share what was it about this topic that attracted them to begin with? So we get some sense of making sure that we're going to cover and address your needs today. What do you think? Why are you here? Yes. You're not older than the panelists, trust me. <laughs> see myself as successful as others do because I feel like I don't get enough done. It, mm -hmm. It's like it's, it's never ending. And my days are too long. Right. And I'm not doing enough for myself during the course of the right. day. Right. Good. Yeah. The day, there's not enough hours in the day. Right? And one of the, one of the things you'll hear today is that you can't be good for others unless you, unless you take care of yourself first. Right? Thanks, Rosalind. Yes. Uh, I think that sometimes in, the, in, in my work I get burnt out and then there are some days where things are very much more organized. And I have a family, and every time when something seems to be in a cruise control, then something else comes up, and the whole discipline is right. off. Throws everything off. It throws off, and also, you know, not to add, not to mention the commute. I mean, for I think most women would agree that a commute of two hours a day is not really worth it. So, what do you do to end your right. work life and right, and the commute on top, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nicole. Um, I think the career navigation component really attracted me to this session because I feel like it's not something I've ever been really good at, kind of like managing my career throughout it and sort of having a vision of where to go next. I find myself kind of just jumping more from one thing to the next because of life circumstances that I need to versus like having an overall vision and a plan. And then also just never really finding enough time to work out even though I feel great what I do. It's just seems like it's the first thing to go out the window. Right, we're gonna talk about that. I'm sure many of you feel like you never have time to work out, right? And so there's just, and so there's not a problem today, we're gonna to talk about how your commitment to fitness really helps make everything else in your life better, so, yes. What's your name? Yeah. yeah. I just put my belt. Ah, well, congratulations. I think, is that right? Thank yeah. you. And, and so you're, you're sort of looking for a way to kind of get a new start and maybe do things differently. Much like Nicole, I was kind of jumping from situation to situation and kind of tired of that. It's just, it's, it's draining. Right. And it feels like there's no direction or I'm not getting ahead of 
conversations about when you sort of find fitness and what resonates for certain people and um, I happen to be a competitive soccer player and I've been playing since I was five um, I just happen to find that early um, and again I think people will find what works for you at different phases of your life there is nothing I dislike more than taking a 25 mile run you would never ever get me to do that but yet I'll go play nine games in a weekend and somehow that seems fun um, you know, and, and Shelly will spend hours underwater and I would be petrified that Jaws was going to chew my foot off. So. Um, so I think, you know, for me, uh, I have a global team. I have two small children. I have a six and a half year old daughter and a little two year old guy. Um, I have a beautiful husband who's wonderfully supportive. Um, I have aging parents uh, that Bobby and I were just talking about. So there's a new dynamic that's now um, entered into my life. <coughs> And uh, I play soccer for sometimes five days a week, but often in the evenings. 
And I think it's really important that for me to succeed in my career, I've always been able to draw a direct correlation between my physical toughness and my mental strength and stamina. And we'll obviously talk more in detail about that. So I kind of look at it as it's not a, um, a competing for time, it's a feeding. So I don't get to be at my best if I don't have that element. Um, and also for me, leading a global organization where it just never stops. You could work 24 hours a day. You've got a team in Asia Pacific and Japan and India and Europe and you know all over the, the states down to, to Latin America. The clock doesn't stop. You know, I mean you really could work 24 hours a day. Um, but in order to have all of that stamina, I've got to be at my best. And I don't work 24 hours a day. So again, we'll, we'll talk more about that. Great. Thank you. Shelly? Yes. Stamina. You earn it. <laughs> right? Definitely. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. But um, my background is as an educator. Um, most recently, I'm leading the leadership development programs at McAfee. And um, before that, I was in another technology company, so 10 years in technology. Before that, I was in an academic setting. So uh, learning is, is my thing. And, and I've spent a lot of time with um, career development as well. So happy to touch on that as, also. Um, I've always been an athlete. I've always played games and sports, and I love it. And I follow sports professionally, college sports. All of it. Um, I've played. I played softball from a very early age, and so the the notion of hitting the home run really resonated for me. Um, and there's a story about that that I'll share at the appropriate time. But um, you know, I watch sports. I play sports. I've tried everything under the sun, from ice hockey to scuba diving is my new passion, and cycling also is a relatively new passion. Um, so like Bobby, marathoning. A lot of life le lessons come out of marathoning. Mm -hmm. You spend five hours on your feet, five-ish hours on your feet. It's a lot of think time there, so uh, a lot of lessons. Five hours, that's pretty good. That's a, <laughs> that's a fast race for me. Um, so, well, thank you, Shelly. Uh, so you can get a little bit of a sense now of sort of our background and you know, what we do outside of work and, and how we all have found the importance of the, the commitment to fitness and how we use the strategies and disciplines of athletes to help us in our professional lives. We'll talk a bit more about that. So first question in general uh, for, for both of you, how do you uh, take stress and, uh, try and sort of redirect it into a learning you know, experience or into something positive? Because when, we, when I asked you about why you were here, I mean, you all said you know, stress is a major factor and we all know that. So, how do you deal with that? How do you kind of, keep, and then in addition, how do you kind of keep things all in perspective? I don't know, I can start off if you want. So <clears throat> I have a, a fairly recent real life example of just an incredibly stressful situation that I'm also really big on kind of post event debriefs. Um, I don't call them post mortems because I just think, you know, there's a lot of death in this world. I don't need to put more on it. Um, and and I, I was uh, leading up, I had actually coordinated a very large soccer tournament. So I'm team manager, I've got all the lineup cards, I've got all the you know game information. We play six games over a two-day period of time. And I got the jerseys and you know everything. And in the midst of it, I also am handling a very confidential executive offer that's gonna be a direct report to my CEO. Um, there's only maybe two or three people in the company that know this is happening. And it all comes down the Friday night right before the weekend. Um, 